Okay, I guess on my hair, she look all right. And with that actually sitting there like this creams, and I had to have them, sis. All fab here. I just had, we're gonna discontinue it, but I had to pick up their book of shadows, honey. The color green makes she fan, expensive breeze, good time. Wise hole, serious? <laughs> What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Torrance here and today you know I'm bringing you all a special video. I normally only upload on I think Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays but I asked you all what would be a nice day to bring you all surprise videos. You all said Sunday and today look at you already see what it is. It's the purple look and if we're doing a purple and it's the first purple of the month you already know we're doing this for my friend Lorraine Johnson Coleman and for this month, we decided to use the Viseart Violet palette. First off, let's get into this packaging, honey. I know it's what, end of fall, beginning of winter here in Michigan, but baby, she's giving spring vibes and I had to pull her out. They claim, they claim, not Viseart, but the people around the world, that this is the world's greatest purple palette. And I'm looking at her like, ooh, world's greatest? You know my subscribers got to hear about that. So, get her all over the eyes and because you all been talking about it, you wouldn't let it go. Queen of the Night lipstick, got her going. I did a video recently thanks to my friend Heather Austin where I was unboxing the new Kaleidos Cloud Lip Clays and baby, this shade here was instantly the most popular. So I knew I had to bring a look for that and I figured Torrance. Support your friend Lorraine. Do what your subscribers want. Bring it all together in one video on a special day Sunday for a special person Lorraine. It all was easy to do. So, if you all would like to know my honest opinion on this eyeshadow look, honey, and this palette, you're going to have to wait to the end. But if you want to know how to achieve this look, all you got to do is wait till after swatches. First, let's get into the beautiful packaging for the Viseart Violet Etendu palette. She's small and compact, but what I love about her is that this palette can stand up on its own. You can use her by itself close, or you can open this as an artist weasel, and baby, did I say weasel? I meant easel. And it's absolutely stunning. The packaging on the outside is the same all the way around. It has simple Viseart on the back, but this is gorgeous, which is why even though I've depotted this palette years ago, well, last year when I got it, I still keep the packaging and the box. Once inside, you see just how beautiful this palette is. This does contain 12 shades, 8 mattes, and 4 metallics. And baby, get into the color variety. Although this is considered a purple palette, you have neutral purples that are good for every day. And you also have vibrant purples, which you already know have my attention. And baby, if you think you know beautiful color stories, Wait until you see these swatches. Now, baby, I know you all can look at this and see the excitement that I have. 12 pigmented, beautiful shades. When I tell you this palette takes you from neutral to bold, as per usual, all my swatches are done one time over no primer. And baby, get into this color variety. That first half is perfect for the office. This second half is perfect for the club. And even though I'm not headed to either one today, you know that second half is calling my name. So baby, grab your brushes, grab your snacks, cause we are about to partay. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get into things. As with all tutorials, all tools and products used will always be in the description bar below. So if I ever forget to mention anything, just make sure you check out there. Also, leave me a comment down below if you all have anything from Viseart. I know that the only two videos that I can recall doing Viseart was one was a glitter tutorial with, I believe it was Eye Candy Cosmetics. I'll leave that link right here above. And I also did a video showing off my Viseart collection. I'll make sure I leave that link above as well. But there's never been a dedicated eyeshadow tutorial where it was just that palette and that palette alone. So, today we are going to be playing with the Violet because one, 
I got to do my look every month for my friend Lorraine. I spoke with her yesterday. She lets it be known that she's having some really difficult times right now and she's actually suffering from the worst pain of her life. And so many of us got together last night on social media to let her know we are still here for her. And although I did have a different video scheduled for today, I'm gonna to push that back a little bit because I wanted to get this purple look out for her. One, to show love and support for my friend Lorraine, as well as to show support for the brand that makes my favorite mats. You all know, I've been saying since day one, Viseart makes my favorite matte eyeshadow, but we've been talking long enough and I really want to get things going. And although technically each shade does have a name, they don't usually list them here. Viseart is a pro-based uh, brand where usually you don't care about the name of the shadow as long as I can identify it and pick it out, I'm good. So what we're gonna do, because I want this look to be popping, I want this look to be popping, we're gonna take our largest, fluffiest blending brush in shade number nine here, and we're gonna use that as a transition throughout our entire crease. And just so we can show you all the build and blend on these, of course, we are gonna tap off our brush because we can always go back in for more. Start on the outer end as low in the crease as we can get her, and then we're just gonna buff her through. And I want you all to see how just with that first little amount, baby, that purple is already shining as a transition shade. Of course, she is nice and soft, so we're gonna have to build her up. But when I tell you nothing in the world blends like Viseart, I remember the very, very first palette I got from them, I believe was the Minx palette. I had to have it after that Minx palette, and you all see, I just went in to build up for the second layer. I blended that out so fast, I didn't even realize it. <laughs> But we're going to go in and do one more layer here so you all can see the build. But that Viseart Minx palette was absolutely beautiful. I loved and repurchased her so much. And I remember when I thought they were going to discontinue it, but they came out with the Itendu Minx Set palette. I still haven't done a tutorial for that one yet, but I will get it up. And baby, you see how we blend it faster than we can talk? That's the power with Viseart. And baby, although this transition is nice, I like to take it there when I do purples. So we're gonna take a smaller blending brush and this here, shade number 11, and deepen up our crease. And because this shade is darker, of course, we're gonna tap her off. We can always come back in for more. We're gonna start on the outer end, low in the crease, doing the same thing. Buff her up and out, and back. I know y'all see that. We ain't even had a chance to build or blend, honey. Just swipe her through a few times. And look at the color on her. Look at the pigmentation, honey. I'm telling you all, there is nothing in the world quite like a Viseart matte. I'm not sure what they do, but baby, I wish more brands could be just like them, honey. Just come out with the shades we need. Give us a variety. Give us a formula that's good to go and keep her moving. And I'm trying to keep this right here low in the crease at first because I want to get most of that pigmentation off. Once I feel as if it is, I'll slightly raise my brush and diffuse those edges. And we want to make sure we do this before we go in with our second layer. I've come to learn that blending before you build makes things a lot easier because you do not want a chunk of color sitting at the bottom on that second layer. And then all of a sudden you realize she's much harder to blend out than she would have been if you did it the first time. We're gonna do this a second time, starting low on the outer end, building her up because we want opacity and the crease. And once we feel as if we're satisfied with that, raise her up to diffuse those edges. And baby, look at her. Just one additional color. You see how vivid and vibrant she is, honey. I cannot wait till we get some crease shades on here. And I want to make sure I'm debating on whether I want to build her up on the outer V. I think we'll skip her for now. And baby, it wasn't until I got through with this that I'm like, you know what? That color real cute. Go ahead and fill up your outer V with her. So I got my brush packed on one side. The other side is clean. And we're just going to take that and we're going to put her on the outer V, honey. We just want to press her in place so she has the most pigment right there in that area. And look at how vibrant she is, baby. I love when the outer V is the darkest part of the eye. 
And as if we can't get any smokier with this look, you know I want to take it just a little bit darker. So we're going to take our smallest blending brush and this shade here, number 12, and we're going to use this to deepen up our outer V. Normally, I will go ahead and tap off my brush, but I want to save all this color that I can because instead of buffing this throughout the crease, we're only going to load up our outer V. I want to take this and press it starting on the outermost corner and packing it and work my way up closer to the front. I just want this to be the absolute darkest point of the eye. And because this palette does not contain a matte black, we want to use this dark purple and work our way up slowly. Although black would give much more of an intense look, I come to find that purples are usually a little harder to blend than blacks. So you want to be careful not to take over shade number 11 you just want shade number 12 to be right here in the outermost point and as dark as possible. Just press it in place. You only have to blend the outermost edge of shade number 12 right there. And you want to see how we have a blank lid, shade number 11, and then shade number 12 in the back. And we still trying to pan our next glitter adhesive, baby. She won't give up every time I squirt a little bit out, a little bit more comes out and I'm like, honey, just give me that last, last drop. But we gonna keep working on her. Got my Morphe brush right here. And I wouldn't necessarily say we gonna cut our crease. My main thing is just making sure the lid is covered. I do not want to cover up my outer V work since we put in the time to get her going. But we just gonna go ahead and get started and see where she takes us. I always like to start at the bottom because I will forget that area right behind the lashes and then work my way up. I'm going to start her right here and just bring her up and back. Once we hit shade number 11, we can stop there. And I want this bad boy to cut high. And I guess since I just said cut high, that's what we're going to do. Once we have it right there by 11, we're going to diffuse that over and just make sure we have an even base after that. And baby, you already know how I'm about to hook up these eyes. If we use the Nabotis, and baby, ain't no point of plan. You already know how we about to hook up these eyes. If we're using the boldest mats, we got to use the boldest shimmers. So first, on the inner half, we're going to go right here to shade number seven, and we're going to build her up. Then, to top her off on the outer half, we're going to come down here to shade number 10. Alrighty, baby. I got my brush loaded up. Let's go ahead and see what she looks like. We're going to pack this on the front half. And you know, I always got to tell myself out loud, Torrance, don't cover everything. Only do the front half, and baby... You all, I'm not sure, are going to be able to appreciate the flip and the color on this. Look at the dimension. Oh, yeah. You all are seeing how she's turning up purple, but she has some blue reflex. She has some pink reflex. And, baby, she is stunning. And I had to stop right there to remind myself, do not let this color take over this entire look, Torrance. Keep it right there in that front half. Full opacity on that first attempt. I didn't have to dip my brush again. Right now I'm just pulling up and down trying to see if there is any area that's patchy or anything because this color looked like she was going to be sheer. But baby, that reflect and that shine and say, oh no, we give opacity. And baby, we got the jewel tone going. I know this look is already dark. But nothing gets my heart going like jewel tone shadows. So let's go ahead with this darkest purple. We want to put her right here to fill in the rest of this space. But we also want to make sure we bring her up toward the front to blend her out. Because baby, although a cut crease has a harsh line, that's the only one I want to be there. I don't need none on my lids where those shadows are. And before I blend her together, you see how that one color is coming through nice and dark right there compared to this shadow on the front. 
baby, I'm loving that you can tell the difference between those two. But you know what I like to do is go in, blend her out, and soften up those edges because I need those two to meld together like they one big color. And we're going to buff her up toward the front. In the back, we want just enough to erase that harsh line. But I'd rather blend toward the front because we can add more color there. And look at that, baby. Boom, boom. Baby, you see how pitch dark and matte it is back here and how light and shimmery it is right here in the front? I can't wait till we finish this up. All right, you guys, this is all we're gonna do for the upper half of the lids. I'm gonna cut away, finish off the face, and when I come back, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna finish off the lower lash line. All right, you guys, we are back and off camera, baby. I was having some fun. I know in the last video, I said I was not gonna be singing again, but baby, I can't get Whitney off my mind, especially after playing with this lipstick here, Queen of the Night. When I did my last video for the Kaleidos unboxing, I'll leave that link right here above. You all went crazy over this shade. When I tell you online and in person, everybody kept saying that dark purple, which is this one here today, she is fabulous. When you go in with that first layer, she comes off as a rather, I'm gonna say, a berry tone purple, but as you build her up, she gets darker and darker. This is two layers, so on camera, she may look like a black, but I wanted to make sure I wore a black t-shirt so you can see the comparison. She is truly a dark, dark purple. The thing is, I'm not sure if she's giving me everything I want. So later on in the tutorial, I may go ahead and top her off with this shade here, Mercury Wave. This is a pale purple. And I think putting this in the center of the lips will help give me a little highlight, make things look a little more purple than what they are. But I'm gonna wait, finish off the eyes first, and do that later. What else do we have here? I ain't gonna say she bad because this is my first time using her, but baby, she better last all day with as difficult as she was. For concealer, I am wearing the e.l.f. 16 hour camo concealer, and baby, I knew for sure, I kept telling myself, with the eye and lip makeup being so dark torch, you want to make sure you hold off on the bronzer and contour as much as you can so that the areas around those is bright and everything just isn't looking dark and muddy. My normal concealer shade would be this one here, the Too Faced Golden Beige. You see the color of this one and then the color of this elf one. So you could tell I was trying to get a bright look to make sure this look was not dark, but baby, as difficult as she was to blend, I'm not playing. She better give me 16 hours and I will have to test her out again to find that out because baby, I'm not wearing this for 16 hours. I gotta run to the grocery store later on. I gotta live with y'all later on, so she will be taking off early, but I'm gonna have to test her out again to find out. For blush, I realized I bought this palette and never used it. This is the Rose Coral Blush Palette from Viseart. Had to pull her out because I'm like, she is stunning. I love pinks, I love corals, and I'm like, Torrance, since you've never used this, which shade has the most purple to it? So I went in with this bottom shade here, and baby, you can see she is there. You can see her from the front. You can see it's something pink there. From the side, she looks a little more subtle because I wanted her to complement this purple eyeshadow look as well as these purple lips. And I'm like, okay, Torrance, you could go in with a regular golden highlighter, but we doing pinky purple looks today, keep it going. So I had to pull out a discontinued, but one of my favorite highlighters of all time. Baby, I grabbed every shade that they had in this collection. This is the Becca Light Chaser Highlighter. You all know Becca is gone, but the Light Chaser collection was absolutely stunning. My favorite purple highlighter is the one in Amethyst Flash's Geode. And when I tell you all, over the years, I've used her so much, you can see she has visible pan and it don't stop nothing. I'm never gonna stop using this until she stops building and blending. Right there on the nose, you see that shine, but on the cheek, you see how she helps blend in and accentuate that purple? Baby, giving my cheekbone a glow. And I'm sitting back like, okay, since you already got an eye look going, I was gonna do black eyeliner, but I'm like, hold on. These lips is already giving me a little too much black, so hold off, just stick to what you know. I know every time I do a purple look, I use my psychedelic sister from Urban Decay, 
but she my favorite, honey. And I've been going through my collection and I realized I don't even have any other purple eyeliners besides the ones from Urban Decay. I always go to another brand, look at their blacks, their browns, and their greens. And so I realized, Torrance, you need to start seeing if you can find something else. But baby, I love her. She got me going, she got me doing it. And baby, anything else I forgot to mention will be in the description bar below. But I'm sitting back like, what else did we have to do besides these lips? Lower lash line and the corner brows, we gotta get to it. So let's go ahead and pull our palette back out. Because the eyes are so dramatic, what we're gonna do is just go ahead and repeat on the bottom what we did on the top. So we're gonna take a large pencil brush, shade number nine, we're gonna buff her out. Then we're gonna take a smaller pencil brush, shade number 11, build up the lower lash line. And then depending on how much definition we want after that, we're gonna take a push liner brush in shade number 12. And I'm not sure how far along the lower lash line we're gonna get it, but I know we're gonna to wanna to keep it at least on the outer end. And here we go with this purple baby. We already know she's gonna be pigmented and I find the lower lash line builds up faster. So we're gonna start on the outer end and work our way slowly, sis. We can always come back and add a little bit more. Actually, just to be safe, we're gonna tap one more time. And we're gonna go from the outer end, build her up. And baby, this purple transition shade is already showing out. I love me a purple eye, but this one shade alone already has a gradient smoke going. And just because I want a little bit more, I'm gonna dip in, tap her off and start from the front. I just wanna make sure all of the colors we build on top of this will truly show out as purple as they can. And baby, I'm not sure if you all can see it in person, I mean on camera, but in person, you can definitely tell that this side has that purple and this side doesn't. All right, honey, this is a tiny pencil brush, but shade number 11 is nothing to play with. We can always come back in for more. So we're gonna start on the outer end because I know y'all gonna be able to see this build up on camera. We're gonna start out here, bring her closer and work our way slowly, baby. We want to try to get all the product off this brush first before we go in for more. And baby, knowing I only connected the outer end, I haven't even gotten all the way to the front, but look at her. You can see that purple there. And I want just the tiniest bit more and we gotta type off as much as we can because I'm comfortable with starting from the front and connecting to the back. But baby, you wanna be careful with this. Yes, ma'am. The build and blend on these is amazing. And I'm saving just the tiniest spot right there in the inner corner. So when we put that highlight shade there, she doesn't have to top off a dark shadow. Okay, you guys, this step is completely unnecessary, but because we use shade number 12 on the outer V on the top, I wanna go ahead and do that on the bottom as well. We wanna try to work very slowly and make sure this connects to the top and work as carefully as you can. And I'm only gonna take it to about the halfway point. This just makes sure that the outer end is dark and the inner half is light. And you already know, my favorite part of eyeshadow is highlighting my inner corner of my brows. I always like to use the brightest shade I can for the inner corners. So we're gonna go right here with shade number six and put that there. Then to finish things off, we're gonna use the same brush and we're gonna come over here to shade number five and we're gonna use that underneath the brows. And you already know, baby, I gotta get y'all in focus because this is my favorite part. I'm telling you, it's just something about having a dark eye with that one beam right there, it's guaranteed to catch your attention. So I'm gonna make sure y'all in view and we're gonna put that right here. And baby, look at how she, sh baby, I am loving her. She looks white in the pan, but when I tell you that purple shift comes through, Yes, ma'am, and I wanna connect that slightly on the bottom where I told you we left that gap at. Normally I would connect, connect. <laughs> normally I would connect it on the top, but today, baby, look at her. Just the nicest, softest beam right there in the center of the eye, and I'm loving her. Now we have shade number five on our brush. We're gonna take this and put this right at the arch of the brow and blend back and down. I'm gonna put her up there first, and baby, 
Do y'all see the shine that she just gave me? Ooh, wee. I'm gonna buff her over and out. Ooh, and I'm loving the fact she doesn't have any micro sparkles or anything. She's just a soft pinky purple. Oh my. I know y'all see a shine from that bad boy there. She is gorgeous. I know she'll be fabulous all over the lid. Normally, I would just end things here, but I want to see what this lipstick looks like with this other color on top. So I'm going to put this on the back of my hand just so we don't double dip and mess up our wine because with this color being lighter than the one we're going to put it on top of, I don't want to transfer that dark color into the tube. And baby, my favorite lip brush of all time was never even sold as a lip brush. This is the Ifra Ulta Precision Smudger Brush. Absolutely love her. We're going to take her, pick some of this product up, and we're just going to buff this starting in the center of the lips and work our way out. Okay, I wanted to go in soft just to make sure she wasn't going to take over, and it looks like she won't. So we can go ahead and dollop her on that. Okay, now I got a big dollop because I need this to light. And I'm not sure she's going to do it. Because this black vase ain't playing with her. Okay, there she goes. Had to put a nice amount on top. Yes, there's something tells me if you're going to wear queen of the night, you're going to wear queen of the night. If you want a lighter purple, put her on first and then put queen on the night afterwards. It honestly has lightened it up. And I think even on camera, you can see she is a lighter shade of purple. But baby, she ain't going to never be a light nothing. She is the darkest purple that they carry. And I think she going to stay that way. So... Ain't no point of doing all this work for our face, honey, if we're not going to lock it in. So grab your setting sprays because you know I'm about to grab mine. Honey, you already know the routine. Let's get her going. Fix Plus to give us a glowy do. All nighter so things will last all day. Cheap fan. Expensive breeze. Good time. I'm going to give this a few more moments to dry and I'll be back to give you all my final thoughts. And here's the final look. I want to go ahead and give you all a full face view of things before I give you all my final thoughts. And I'm here to tell you all, honey, if you've been looking for a purple palette, what are you waiting on? Like, get and to her, baby, she fabulous. She's gorgeous. I keep looking back and forth in the camera like, boom. Looking up at y'all, looking down at the mirror like, hold on. Sis, she is stunning. She is stunning. I absolutely love this palette. This is my first time wearing it on myself. So although... I can call it a first impressions because I never used this particular palette and I never used it on myself. I have used this on clients, so I already knew this was a beautiful palette. The thing is, as far as I'm concerned, no palette is considered perfect unless you make her yourself. So if you want to know the pros and cons on this palette, let's get into her. First off, pro, the size. Right here, she's about the size of my hand, so it's not something that's very large or something you're going to have uh, trouble trying to store. You can keep her right here in her component. She comes with a mirror. Don't want to blind you all with that. But as an, uh, someone who makes content, there is nothing better than a palette that folds all the way back so that whenever you want to pose or hold her and show her off in videos or pictures or something like that, you can do so without damaging your packaging or your mirror, and your mirror doesn't have to create a glare. That's beautiful. As someone who absolutely love shadows that can be depotted, the fact that this is a magnetic palette takes it for me. You don't even need a magnet to pull these out because they have grooves right here. You can literally take your finger up against the bottom, lift her up right here, and pull this shadow straight out. No magnet necessary. 
you know, a lot of palettes, you either need a magnet, a stick, or something to do so. And with these, there is no need. Another pro. Viseart makes my favorite matte eyeshadow formula. They make my favorite matte eyeshadow formula. So as far as I'm concerned, they can do no wrong with those. The, the build is beautiful. The blend is beautiful. The color variety is beautiful. Not to mention, you get eight out of the 12. I have hooded lids, honey. I need depth and dimension. Whether I have neutrals, whether I have bold shades, I need that crease, I need that outer V shade, or I'm looking at a palette like. But guess what? Another pro. You got purple neutrals, you got purple bowls. I use all the darkest, most vivid purples for this look today. So to know you can take it here, but if I had say a meeting, a wedding or something like that, and that person wanted purple, it's nothing to stick to this first row and put this all over the lid and keep them satisfied and keep them moving. You can wear this to an office meeting. You can wear this to a wedding. You can wear this to the club, and that's what makes her so fabulous. The only, only cons that I can personally see somebody having, which to me is like, you get what you pay for, is the fact that this doesn't have a matte black or a matte white. Many people consider those shades to be essential, I'm team, every palette deserves a matte black just because I love a black smoky eye. So if for any reason I wanted to create a truly deep dark purple smoky eye though, who needs the black because she can show up so deep on the eye you see right here. She's almost blending in into my lashes. So who needs the black? And everybody has a single black that they can add. So it's like, you're not gonna get a true neutral brown look from this but she's a monochromatic purple palette, honey. Why are you looking for a neutral brown over here? You said you wanted colors. She's called Violet. She ain't called neutral with a pop of. So I tell y'all, no palette is considered perfect. And because she don't got that black or that white, I'm going to say she ain't. But if you were to say, Torrance, do you recommend this palette? Absolutely. Torrance, do you understand why they call this the world's greatest purple palette? Absolutely. The only, I'm going to say only one, one, one possible other kind you may have is if, like me, or many people who tend to be on the younger side of the generation, you like extremely high foiled bling from across the street shadows, she may not be the one for you. Viseart is a professional based brand, so they tend to get some metallic shadows, but they're the type who prefers satin to, I'm gonna say satin to, how can I put it? Satin to shimmery, not necessarily metallic. And even if they do go to metallic, they can do those. We live in a generation where full shadows, glitters are taken over and they are everywhere. And a lot of professionals don't like those because I can tell you, during all the years I did freelance work, the only times I ever use glitters is if I put out a discount for glitters. Otherwise, most people weren't trying to risk that. If they were going to a wedding and know they were gonna cry, the last thing they wanted to do was wipe their eye with a tissue and know they got glitter there. But this here, don't have all the girls going. And I'm telling you, I am loving the fact that I topped this lip off with even more product, cause baby, I piled her on and she is still not cake or anything. Like you see how much product I had several swipes on the back of my hand. This brush is loaded and I just pow, pow, pow. She still doesn't feel dry. She still doesn't feel crappy. She still, you know, hasn't separated or anything. So it's like, baby, these things build like carpenters. Like this is only my second time trying to formula, but this time I tried two different colors. So, so far we're three into our 20. And I can't wait to see what color combo we come up with. Ooh, <laughs> I'm getting lost. I can't wait to see what color combos we're gonna come up with next because so far I've been trying to pair up a different lipstick with my eye looks and I'm loving this here. But all of this was to help try to lift my spirits and lift the spirits of a friend because baby, I am hoping and praying that my friend pulls through this and comes out stronger and happier on the other end. As someone who deals with chronic pain myself, I understand that many times you have to fall back and you have to deal with your health. 
And it's always nice to know that you have family and friends that you can reach out to. You all have been an amazing and beautiful support in my life whenever my family hasn't been around. And you all have become like family to me. And so has Lorraine Johnson Coleman. And although we've been playing around, we've been trying to keep things up and you know keep our spirits up, it does hurt when you realize someone is going through something and there's nothing you can do to help them but be moral support because I'm not a doctor, honey. I, I don't know the cure. I don't know the steps. I don't know the process. But as a friend and feeling as if all I can offer right now is moral support, you best believe I'm going to give it 100%. So I made sure to bring this video early because one, Viseart makes some of my favorite, favorite color stories. They make my favorite matte formula. And every month I do a purple look. And for the end of this year, I knew I wanted to do a purple look for Lorraine. And I figured Torrance, why not give her the best? Because she gives the world the best. And I really feel as if with this eye look, I can do so. Um, if you all want another tutorial with this palette, please let me know. Because I know many of you may see this look and think, that's dark for you to be calling it the world's greatest. What kind of light looks can she do? And I'm willing to show that for you all. But I had to get this video up and done. Because when I tell you. I'm recording this on Saturday. I will be editing this on Saturday and I will make sure that link is up tonight so everyone knows tomorrow. I've already sent Lorraine a preview of this without the lips. So once I cut this camera off, I will get back on the phone and get to speaking with her. But I just really wanted to make sure everyone knows about this issue here. We are going to continue to use the hashtag. We are here for you, Lorraine. I'll leave that link above as well in the description bar. If you all want to know or, uh, more about Lorraine, support her page, support her channel. I'll make sure I leave that link down there as well. But before our eyes get watery and we don't get any pictures or anything with this or our voice continue to crack, we're going to end this video here. If you all truly like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also, leave me a comment down below if you have any palettes from Viseart. This purple one isn't my absolute favorite one, but as far as purples, baby, she got them beat. Um, I'm also going to try to make sure I get another tutorial up with uh, Viseart every month coming forward because they are one of my absolute favorite brands. And I realized over the years, I've just not shown them the love that I truly believe they deserve because when I was freelancing, they were the brand for me. As far as complexion products was, NARS. But eyeshadows and things like that, I always knew I could count on Viseart and they were probably one of the first, if not the very first brand to give me a pro discount. So it's nothing but love for the brand. And I just want to hurry up and get back to it. And even though normally I would keep these in the big Z palettes that I store them in because I have mine all in Z palettes because they're all in one big collection. I'm going to keep this one separated in case you all want another tutorial with her. And I also have to keep her separated from my rankings video at the end of the month. But baby, we've been talking for a while and you all know I will never shut up as long as you allow me to keep going. So we're going to end this video here. And with nothing else, I hope you all remember to practice, continue to stay blessed. And until next time, goodbye, YouTube.